Hi and welcome. I'm John and this is Unicorn Gaming Terrain. Guys, welcome back. This is a Let's Build video. For everyone that's new, Let's Build videos are I take a model kit and I'll show you how to put it together. Now, some people say, well, Why would you do that? But there, are, there are people that struggle with instructions, there are people that suffer with dyslexia, there are people that are um, interested in a new faction or interested in certain models. And just, you know, they, they don't feel confident enough in their skill to do it. But this is a visual aid for everyone. So even if, um, as you can see, handing banshees, even if you wanted to, in a year's time, go, okay, let me start collecting some Moldari, and you have these models, then you know how to put them together. If there's anything wrong on the sprue, as in things are numbered wrong, or there's... Parts of the sprue where you're clipping up, you have to be careful of this or careful of that because it could break. Again, this is a visual way to help you guys out. So for all of my regulars, I feel love. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon, guys. Right, so as you can see, I'm going to be building some Hanning Banshees. So before we get Pop the sprue open and look at the sprue. We'll talk through tools needed as usual. Mold line scraper. Some people will use a hobby knife or a, a surgical blade. If you use any sort of sharp blades, be careful because they are sharp. A good, good thing to do as well if you're using a blade is if there's anyone in the house, let them know you're using a blade so nobody comes and accidentally, accidentally scares you with a blade in your hand. Um, have some sanding sponge this is essentially sponge with sandpaper the other side so you can get into little nitty grits and you know bits that this tool may not be able to get into properly we have clippers it's the most usual tool that we have this is a plastic kit so i have plastic glue but i also have super glue on hand just in case so i'm going to pop the box open and we'll have a look at the stat lines and everything else as usual so here's their stat line movement of eight so they are quite fast three plus to hit in combat three plus with shooting because they're armed with shrunken pistols um strength three they're not that strong toughness three they don't they don't like get any sort of punishment they have one wound the exarch has two wounds they have three attacks, the Exarch has four attacks, so they can dish out some close combat attacks there. They are leadership eight and they have a four up armor save, so they're not the most heavily armed um, opponents or heavily armed people dishing, dishing things out. So stat line weaponry. Number one is a shrunken pistol, which is, looks like rapid fire one, which is nice. Uh, strength four, minus one AP and one damage. So, you know, not that great, but it's okay. Number two is the um, Banshee Blade, by the looks of it. Plus one, plus one strength, so that it becomes strength four in close combat, so that is pretty good. Minus four AP, so that is quite a, quite a sharp blade. So they one damage a piece low. So potentially they could dish out um, three, three wounds per Banshee, so it's quite tasty. Number three is Banshee Blades. It's plus one strength is minus three AP and it's one damage piece. I don't know why it's AP is minus when there's two of them. I don't know, but I'll look in the codex and find out. Number four is like a, some sort of spear. It's plus two to strength. So it gives them, I think that's an Exarch only weapon. But they give them plus two strength, so that'd be strength five. Minus three AP and two damage a piece. So the Exarch has four attacks. So that could be quite a tasty weapon. And then we have... This lovely little throwing spear, uh, throwing star thing. Same thing that Jinzar, their Phoenix Lord, has. But again, I think that's a, um, I think that's an Exarch only weapon. I think all these three are uh, Exarch only. But there's there's two profiles: twelve inch range, uh, looks like assault three, strength five. That's quite it's quite a strong weapon. Minus three AP is only one damage a piece. So salt free says maximum of three damage you're gonna get from frying there. It's twelve inch range, that's so not too great. Um and in close combat, he does plus one strength, excuse me, strength four, minus three AP and one damage. So it's not 
it's not the best, but it's okay. Right, now what we're gonna do, as always, this is what everyone else knew, as always, we look at the sprue and see what we can identify and you know what we can eliminate from the sprue before we've even touched the sprue. Now it's very hard for a squad like this because there are loads you're gonna come across loads of bits like this. Yeah, body sections and legs and stuff like that. It looks like hair that does. But uh, there's that there's that frying that frying absolutely amazing weapon. There's a spear. So I think this could be the Exarch sprue. If you know honesty. Just because of the weapons are here and there's different head variations and and the base as well. That's that's what the Exarch stands on. So let's move that one out away for a minute. Twenty-eight mil bases. There is a 25mm base in here, and that is for this lovely little thing. It's a totem thing that they have. Uh, much like Dark Reaper one video should be should have been Monday, yesterday, should be. Um they had their own little totem. And it's actually ironic actually now that I say that because I have a list of things that I have planned to build in, in a certain order. The Rogal Dawn Battle Tank just sort of threw that out a little bit. And I know that next week when the World Eater stuff arrives, that's going to fry it out a little bit more. But it's, it's ironic because these were penciled into probably to be done this last Friday. That arrived up, no, the last Saturday these were meant to be done. That arrived up Saturday, the Rogal Dawn. So, um, when I say just because I had said it before, that arrived up. So that was getting built. Just put these guys back a week. But you guys actually voting on the Reapers to be painted. So... The Reapers of Monday's painting video, and these guys have this, these guys turn to be built, so this is a little bit ironic, but anyway, let's have a look at this sprue. So, we've got this all looks like hair, there's legs and bodies, so you can't really eliminate sort of that sort of stuff because it's you don't know if that goes with this body or that body. And but you've got heads, absolutely loads of heads, there's there's body, body packs, I presume that's the back of the body. That. that's an amazing such an amazing but as i'm saying so there's a leg that will probably go into there to make it look like running is that the only sprue oh sweet okay look i see i start seeing the other legs down there's another leg obviously goes with a front body part and then another leg it's gonna be a little bit worried there so i'm gonna finish setting up and we'll look at the first pieces that we need so make things easier for ourselves, we cut the little totem first, because that goes in this little own little base, we can glue that up and get rid of that. I had a look at the codex. Um, wow. <laughs> the XRK has some, some crazy stuff. Like the, the two blades, they're not Banshee blades, they're mirror blades. And what they, what one, what they do is give an additional attack. So she'll be on like double attacks. Absolutely crazy, because she's armed with Two mirror blades, it's just uh, four attacks become eight attacks. Absolutely crazy, but that's that makes them a bit more hardcore. Um, they have a four up invulnerable save, they have their banshee mask as well, which lets them, um, I think it's fight first. I read it and that's, oh, that's pretty good. I think that's the way it is, I can't remember now, but anyway, so this is the Exarch sprue, and the other one is the all the banshee bits and pieces. So the first piece we need. Is number 55, which is this base part, yeah, and number 46, which is a leg piece. This, where are we? Uh, where are we? Oh my goodness, I can't even find it now. I don't mean it's not right in front of me. So, this piece, yeah, and this piece. So, I'm going to snip those off, clean those down. So clean him down and glue him to the base. And I'll come back and dry fit this and show you how these two go. Right, so he's glued. Now this little bit, that's the foot. So when you're taking off the sprue, what I just showed you is like that. So make sure you turn around this so you can see the foot. Okay. Now the foot is in a little hole there. At the end of the thing, there's a little bit that clips in. I might have to trim it down a little bit because it looks a bit weird on camera. And that just literally slots in there. So I might have to just trim that off a little bit. I don't think that's meant to be the little nipple bit on the end, but that goes in there like that. Okay, so I'm going to just trim that up a little bit, clean it down, glue it in, and then come back for the next piece. 
And essentially, this is the this is the exile uh, sprue, but there's actually two bodies on here. Okay, the instructions are telling me to take body number fifty-four, which is this one, and to take number three, which is one of these backpack pieces. So I'm going to slip them both off, clean them down, and show you how they go together. Right, so basically, this is the back piece, number three. This is the body, this is a slot in like that. It gives you your arm slots, your head slot. So I'm going to glue those in, and we'll come back for a look for the next piece. Right, so the next piece is needed, a number 44, which is this leg piece here, and number 53, which is a weird looking, a weird looking piece. Okay. So I'm going to snip those off, clean those down, We'll come back and show you where they go. All right, so this piece is a very weird piece. You can see there's a line coming. There's a line coming down with two dots. The line coming down is this line across here and the two dots. So it literally sits on <clears throat> like that. I can't show you because my giant fingers are in the way. But I'm going to glue it on and you'll see. It literally goes on like that okay now obviously <clears throat> i've got a bit of glue over the top next it's shiny so i've have to dry for a minute but then this leg glues in this little piece here glues in there on the other side okay like so so i'm actually gonna i'm actually sorry I'm dropping it i'm actually gonna glue that on and then leave that to dry and we'll come back for the next next stage of this build. Right, so this bit is the bit I'm not looking forward to. Just because it's the point of connection. That glues in there. Yeah. And then this glues on the base. So this is this bit at the bottom here is where it glues onto the base. So it's freestanding like that. Okay. So I'm gonna glue that in. Hopefully that's, that stays because I'm probably have to hold it for a couple of minutes and I'll come back for the next pieces. Right, so there she is on the base. So now we need number 49, which is this piece, because we start working on her head. Number 51, which is this piece. And then number 63, which is this piece here. Yeah. So this piece, this bad boy here, and this piece here. Now, there is different heads that you can use and different hair you can give her. But I'm going to go with one of the instructions. And I'm going to, so I'm going to snip those off, clean those down, and show you how they go together. Right, so number 63, you can see there's little grooves on there. That little line is what we want. The little line just basically lines up here, like so. Yeah. And this one on the other side has the same sort of thing. So it lines up, it's very fiddly, this is, lines up like that, okay? So I'm going to glue those together and then come back to you and show you where it goes. I actually find this model so far more fiddly than Necron Warriors. Not quite the same as flayed ones, but still um, as fiddly as Necron Warriors. Anyway, I'm going to glue those together and come back and show you where they go. Now I'm going to give that a few minutes to dry. But now onto the weapons. So she has different weapon variations. Absolutely insane. From this throwing star to the spear to the um, blade and um, trunk and catapult. Or she has the mirror swords. I'm going to go with the mirror swords. So you need number 60, which is this one. And number 57, which is this bad boy. Okay. So I'm going to snip those off, clean those down, and then we'll show you where they go. Now, one thing is when you clean these swords down, put your finger behind it and just do gentle motions. Now I switched between the Sandus Manager and the Displayed, the Moldon Scraper, just to try and get as much as possible off. There isn't very many mold. <clears throat> there isn't very many mold lines, only along the, the straight edge of the blade. But again, support the blade and just do be gentle, be gentle but firm. If you go too hard, you're going to snap the sword. Okay, so there we have that. Right, so 
where does all this go? Well, this head, self-explanatory, it glues in there, okay, like so. The arms, this arm has the blade holding backwards. So this one goes up on this arm, yeah? And this, the blade coming this one is at a weird angle, so it goes on like that. So she's sort of swinging it out. So I'm gonna glue those, those three bits on and we'll come back and do sort the face out. Right, so that there is a banshee blade, okay? But that and the shrunken catapult there as well. That is because if you want to make this particular sprue into a normal banshee to make a bigger unit, that's the options there to do it, okay? Um, there are so many different heads now. There's all these heads. You, the Unari head, 64. You've got 66, you've got 67. So many different heads. Um, now, number 67 is supposed to go 62 and 50. So I don't think I'm going to use that one. I'm going to go for 66, which is this one right here. Absolutely amazing. All these heads are amazing, actually. But I'm going to go with 60, uh, 66. I'm going to snip it off, clean it down, and then show you where it goes. Very, very simple. All right, so on the back of the head, there's a little hole. On the front there, that's where it goes. So this is just slots in there. Now I'm going to put some glue on it and pull it into place. I need to show you that because it's, it's that simple. Very, very straightforward. So now that's the that exact like done. So now we're going to go into the, the, the banshees themselves. But if I do, you see the so many different options for this exarch. Yeah. She can, she can actually have the shrunken cat pole with the sphere. She can have this, there's the options. For, she, can, she can have the shrunken cat pole with the uh, shrunken pole. Yeah, I think it is. With the little disc, the little Death Star that she can throw. So now it's on to normal banshees. The first bits we need for the first banshee are number 43, which is on the Exarch sprue. Number 43, and another one of the number threes, which is the backpack piece. So I'm going to snip those off, clean those down, and just, it's the same as, it goes on the same way as it did for her, just straight in. Um, and how I can show you the next piece. Right, scrap that. I messed up. <laughs> That body is to make the Exarch into a normal banshee, so that can go. I was looking for number, I was looking for number 44. Searching, searching, couldn't find it anywhere, and then realised, wait, is that the same leg that's on the other one? I looked on the sprue, and yes, it's missing from the sprue, and I was like, oh no, that's what it is. And then I looked, and I was like, oh, you idiot. Brain fart time. But we do need number three, so I separate that. So the next, the next piece we need to make the first banshee is number four. Where is number four? Apologies, guys. I'm going to bumble around looking for this. There it is. Number four is there. Okay. So I'm going to snip that off, clean that down, glue number three onto the back of it as as I should as I just did, and then I'll come back for the next piece. See, even I made mistakes, but that's part of this part of this video. So then you guys don't make the same mistake I just did. Anyway, next piece we need is number five, which is this little leg here. I'm going to snip it, clean it, and show you where it goes. Right, so this one, there's a little hole in there, and there's a little pip there. So it just glues on there, like so. So I'm going to glue that on, and come back for the next piece. The next piece we need is number six, which is this piece here. Okay, it's a bit confusing because there's a, it looks like a nine, but there's actually a little line underneath it. See that make that out? That means th the line underneath it means that it's number six. If it was number nine, it'd be the other way around with the line underneath it. So I'm going to snip it, clean it, show you where it goes. This is the same as the other one. So this leg glues into there. There's a little. How do you look at it, right? Yeah, there's a little bit that goes on there, just straight in. like this hold on with me there we go i'm going to glue that in 
and then come back with the next piece. Now see, what you're meant to do next is glue the arms in and the head on, and then glue it to the base afterwards. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the head first, glue her to the base, so that's setting whilst I'm, you know, whilst I'm cleaning down the weapons and everything else, and then glue the weapons and heads on. But the ones you need are 9, 10, and 11. As you can see, there's a little, there's a line, if I can just spin around so you can see it, just underneath the 9, which is there, you can see the line. So anyway, these one, these heads, this hair goes onto this headpiece, the same as the other one. So I'm going to clip those off, glue them together, and then come back, come back, well, actually clip them, clip them, glue them, clip them, clean them, glue them, and glue her to her base. And then we'll come back for the arms and the, the head. Right, so the next piece is needed is this little yoke again. This is on the on the leg, the same as the X arc. It's a different type of pattern though, but you're, you, it goes the same way. So the pointy end goes along her knee. Number seven, which is her shrunken cap hole. And number eight, which is her uh, banshee blade. So I'm going to clean the three of those off. Um, clip them off, clean them off. But as you see, I'm going to prop her up because she doesn't want to stand properly. But you're meant to put all this on first. And the head. And then glue her to the base. I went to glue to the base first of all. So I just think that's a bit easier. I might have to wait for that to, to dry fully before I can glue her arms on, just because of the weight difference. But the way that the arm is, the shrunken goes off to the side behind her, so it's, and the blade goes across the front of her. So she's like running to swing it. So it, it sort of balances itself. But anyway, I'm going to clip those off, clean those down, and then come back to you and, well, I don't need to show you where they go. It's very straightforward. Just arm, arm, and the head goes on. But then I'll show you where, what, what number head we can use. Yeah, so <clears throat> the head for this one is number 12, which is one here. I don't know what all these heads are for. But anyway, there's number 12. So I'm going to stick that, clean that, and glue that straight in. What I've done here, I brought up another one of the older Banshees, just for a size comparison. Because the squad is now between 5 and I think it's 5 and 20, I think it's or 5 and 15, or whatever it is, 5 and 10 uh, banshees per squad. So I thought, I've got three of these old lead ones, so I thought I'd bring it up and just have a look at the size comparison, and, and I'll tell you what, there isn't this tiniest of difference in the size. These guys are more dynamic and, you know, acrobatic poses, whereas these guys are just flat, solid blade, ready to go. Because one of them, it actually looks like she's sort of charging forward as well, but so that's actually pretty good. They can actually all go to the same squad, which is nice. So anyway, I'm gonna take number number twelve off. Okay, I'm gonna snip it, clean it, and glue it on, and we'll come back back to you for the next pieces. Right, so for the next banshee, it's telling you to do the body first, but I'm gonna do the leg first because I think the leg will take longer to dry and balance itself. Um, Sixteen what we need, which is this piece here, and 15, which is this piece here. As you see, 16 is just a foot with a little bit of rock. And 15 is the same thing as, a, as the XR goes into the, that part goes into the top of the foot. So I'm gonna snip those, clean those, glue those, and come back to the next pieces. Now, <clears throat> there's a little pin on the bottom of the foot there. Unlike the XR, I didn't have, really have the pin there. But this literally just slides in there like that. So I'm going to glue that in and I'll come back to you for the next piece. Now, so we need number 14, which is this new piece here, and a number 3. So I'm going to snip those off, clean those off, and number 3 slots in the back the same way as the other ones do, so let me show you that. I'm going to clean them, glue them, and then come back and show you what we need next. So the next piece we need is number 17, which is this lovely piece here. So I'm going to snip it, clean it, and I'm not going to glue it because I'm going to show you where it goes, but <clears throat> I might have to glue this leg, <clears throat> which I'm using the contrast paint to prop up at the moment. I might have to glue that into the base with this one, and then the body goes on top. I might have to glue the body to that first and then see which way it works out, but I, I might need to leave that to dry for an hour or two. Right, so this 
lovely leg. Where are we? Just slots in there, like that. It doesn't go in like that, John. Come on. It's us in this way. So she's sort of prancing up in the air. Yeah. Like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna glue that in and we'll come back to you for the next piece. The only thing is it doesn't stand on its own, it's run heavy. So I was contemplating whether to glue it on the base or not, but I'm gonna glue the leg in first and then then probably glue it into the base. So I actually went ahead and glued her body on and then glued her straight to the base. So her arms and head is the only thing that's left. This one was the fiddiest. The legs come off. Oh my goodness me. Let me show you this. How fiddly that is. The legs come off. There's the body. She goes on sort of facing an angle. She's running mid swing. It's a weird positioning, I think. It just doesn't look like it's cut and sit right. See the top of the leg there? It doesn't look like it's right, but it appears to be right. It's like I'll leave it to dry. I'm going to look at the next pieces. The next pieces we need, we're going to put our head together first, I think. So we need number 22, which is this one here, number 20, which is this one, and number 21. Again, I don't need to show you how they go because they go the same as the others. And we need number 19, which is this one here. Again, you'll see the nine, one nine with a line underneath it. That blade and number 18, which is this one. So basically, all this in the corner here is what we need. And number 23 is a, a helmet to go into the, the, the hair. So I'm going to snip all those off, clean those down, put the helmet together. Again, I'll only show you how the arms go or how the hair goes because it's the same as, same as this one. Same as this badass here. Yeah. Obviously, the arms are not in the same position, but they're. They're pretty self-explanatory. Right, before I glue the arms on and the head on, I don't know to say that because I've already shown you that it's very simple, very straightforward. There's one thing the instructions are telling you to do is glue the head on to the board model, then glue the face onto onto it. Right, so it's a lot easier to put the face on first. So I just discovered that the third model in. It's a lot easier to do that first. So I'm going to glue the arms on, glue the head on. And that model's done, and then we move on to number four. Right, so the next part of the next guy, next lady, shall I say, is 24, which is this piece here, which is sort of a chest piece with the rope coming down. And a number three, so I'm going to snip those off, glue those together. You don't need to see how they go because I've already shown you. The back goes into the front, and that's that. And then I come back to you for the next piece. Right, so I've actually cut the other part of the sprue off because it's just heads. That I don't need. So we need number 25, which is this one here, and number 26, which is this little leg here. I'm going to snip those, clean those, and glue those. They're self explanatory. This is the left leg. And no, that's the right leg, sorry. No, that's the left leg. What am I doing? Yeah, that's the, that's the left leg. <laughs> that's the left leg there. Yeah. And that's the right leg. So I'm going to snip those off, clean those off, and glue those on. And I'll come back to you for the next bit. Right. <clears throat> As you see, the legs are on. Very, very straightforward. Now it's time to get the arms off. Glue the arms on and glue the head together and all that business, yeah? But how can I glue the arms and have them set nicely when she's not on a vertical base? So I'm going to leave that for 10 minutes to dry whilst I'm cleaning the rest of her parts off and then I'm going to glue that to the base so she's standing up and then I can glue the arms on. Now, the arms are number 28, number 27. Yeah, these two are weapon arms. Then it's a 30, 
which are here, 29 and 31. So it's basically these three here, these two, I'd imagine that's a head, but we'll get onto that in a minute. So I'm going to snip these pieces off and clean them down, glue a head together, so the same as the other, other, other ones. Um, and then we're going to glue it to the base, glue our arms on, and put our head together and everything else. And if that is the head, I'll come back and let you know. But if it's that, I'm sure it's the, it should be that one. Right, that's what I'm going to do. Right, so the head is this one here. Which is number 32. We've just taken all these bits. So that's the head. Again, I'm going to snip it off and glue it straight in to when it's like that. And I'll come back to you. Right, so the last banshee. What I might do with this one is just leave it until tomorrow so the base is set with the model standing on it. And then just glue the arms on and glue the head on. It's, you know, same as the others, not that difficult. The arms seem to go on one way. There seems to be like a little, um, a little nook. Let's get this one up here. Can you see there's like a little weird shape in there, like a square type thing. That's what sits on the body. And there's, on the body there is a little bit that it sits into. So it's not, not that difficult at all. Or it's like this one, pretty flat. That just sits on there nice and flat. So obviously these are the last piece, the last Banshee pieces. First pieces we need, number 35, number 34, so two, the leg and bottom half of the body and the other leg, and number 42, which is this little yoke, one of these little yokes go on the leg there. So I'm going to snip them and clean them. It's pretty self-explanatory that goes in that side, that goes on there. I'm going to glue them together and we'll come to the next piece. Right, so now we need number 33, which is this body piece, this chest piece. And then up and up the last number three. Again, that goes in the same way. Front goes in the back to give me a little back to front. Sorry, back part goes in the front part to give me a little bit to stick the head into. Right, so obviously the last pieces number 40, number 39, number 38. That's the head that all goes together. There's number 41, which is the other head that goes into that. So I'm going to snip those off, clean those down, glue those together. So they're like this, ready to be glued on. Because I've, as you can see, I've glued the body onto her. Don't know if the body's going to... Stay. Yeah, the body has stayed. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Now, when you're gluing these models, don't be afraid to turn around and look. Because, especially like with this body part, I was gluing it on, gluing it on. There's a little bit of the back that hooks onto it. But I was gluing it on, gluing it on. It didn't look right, didn't look right. I turned it around and I was like, okay, no, it's, it's not right. So then I just adjust the front and then that's it, it's sitting perfectly. So I'm going to leave this to dry for 10 minutes or so. Oh, I'm dropping it like that. No, it's still on, it's still good. I'm going to leave it to dry for 10 minutes and I'm going to stand it up on the base, glue it to the base. Because this one seems to lean forward, really forward. But I'm going to glue it to the base and then tomorrow and just come in and just go bang, 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 done. And same with that one. I don't need to show you that because it's the same as the others. But I just want to get this, show you these parts and get to that stage and then bring down three pictures. But anyway, I'm going to snip the hair off, head off, then the hair, glue that old, clean that down, glue it together, glue the face into it. To the weapon's arms, yeah, the shrunken pistol and the branchy blade. Clean those down and have them to one side as well, ready. And then I'll come back to you for the last bit. Right, so all of her parts are just cleaned and sitting here. The face is done. All that's done, ready. So all I have to do tomorrow is glue the arms on, glue the head on. Same with this one here. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna film that. It's no point. I'll do that first thing as soon as I come in tomorrow. Ten minutes and it'll be done. Or well, half hour probably and it's done. Because all the parts are cleaned, ready to go. I know exactly where they're going. And they're separate as well. So I know these parts of this model, these parts of that model. Job done. Now guys, I'm going to bring down and show you some pretty pictures. I'll even show you, compare the old lead howling manji to the new plastic howling manjis. And you can see there's not much of a difference. If you've enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful in any way, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And turn your notifications on, because subscribing to the channel costs you absolutely nothing. Okay? And please everyone smash the thumbs up button so that YouTube will um, share this video to more and more people. And that's what we want to keep the channel growing. So guys, I'm going to bring down and show you some pretty pictures. But until next time, take it easy.